it looks like there is a game of copycat going on in the beauty industry. Specifically, Glossier has two products that look like they directly compete with The Ordinary, and they're charging almost three times as much. So the question is, is this Glossier and Ordinary product a dupe for one another, or are they different? Today we are going to look at them from a chemistry and scientific perspective, and we're going to find out if they are copycats or if there is a better application for one than the other. So the first two um, products in question happen to be pretty interesting. The Ordinary had these first, but Glossier recently came out with the Niacinamide and Zinc Serum that looks like it directly competes with the Ordinaries, and they also came out with a super glow vitamin C, which is literally vitamin C magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is pretty much what the ordinary one is. Now, something I do want you to keep in mind is that the ordinary, the reason that they kind of rose to fame and are able to sell such inexpensive skincare is because they did take ingredients that are normally put in with a bunch of other ingredients in moisturizers that will charge you 50 bucks for, and they said, we're just gonna take one ingredient and sell it on its own. These have been around in the industry for decades, and The Ordinary just isolated them. So when we say copycat, we kind of have to look at these through that lens to totally understand that. Now, what is interesting is that everyone's Googling niacinamide and zinc, 10%, or magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. So is it possible that Glossier, being a very internet forward facing brand, saw that all of this search traffic was going to the ordinary and decided, we can retitle that on a product? So the biggest differences on the outside are of course the price. The zinc and niacinamide serum is $10 from The Ordinary and at Glossier I think it's 26 or 28 bucks. And the Glossier um, ascorbyl phosphate vitamin C booster is I think 28 and then again The Ordinary is around 10. But let's actually turn to learn so that we can actually see what those ingredients say and find out what the details are. So again, the reason that the zinc and niacinamide formula is so popular is because it is great for breakouts and oil production. Um, specifically, niacinamide is a B vitamin and zinc is a mineral that we all need. These are things that we ingest, but they're also very beneficial to the skin. They can help regulate oil production and The Ordinary actually calls this, shut up phone, how rude of you. The Ordinary actually calls this a high strength vitamin and mineral blemish formula. Silence. I love the product and I've recommended it. And people who've tried it have said, oh my God, it works amazing for my acne, or oh my God, it caused my skin to itch or to purge. And again, this is why you should always patch test first um, to make sure that it's going to work for you. But also, there are some ingredients in here that might not be super friendly for everybody. Whereas when we look at the Glossier, it does have this zinc and niacinamide, which are again the two actives, but it also has some interesting buffering ingredients that I would argue make it very different than what The Ordinary has to offer. So when we look at The Ordinary, it is an alcohol-free formula. It's also dimethicone-free. It does have some gums in here, which kind of help to give it this serum-y texture and um, kind of reflect on how it sits on and soaks into the skin but it is a basic alcohol-free water-based formula that delivers your zinc and niacinamide. The indica seed gum that's in here is probably working as a slight antioxidant and maybe it's a little bit soothing to the skin, but that's about it. But something that we do have to look at is that because it is a water base, it needs to be preserved. And they happen to use chlorpensin and phenoxyethanol to do that. Now, these are two preservatives that are seen as more natural, but unfortunately, natural is still powerful. And a lot of people have a uh, adverse reactions to phenoxyethanol. We've actually done a video about it if you want to know more. But so for those who are having redness or itching or stinging, it could be that the formula isn't right for you or it could be the phenoxyethanol. So that's when we have to look at Glossier and we know this is very different. Now, although we know that this is also a water-based formula, this one does contain an alcohol, um, specifically propanediol. We have some interesting inserts in here. We have glycerin, so again, that's very soothing and very hydrating to the skin. We also have honeysuckle flower extract and honeysuckle extract. Now, what's interesting about honeysuckle is that it's very soothing to the skin. It can act as an antioxidant. It can actually act as a saponin. And it's actually got some flavonoids in there, which can be beneficial to the skin. But honeysuckle can also be used as a preservative. Again, it's natural, but it's powerful. So I have a feeling that Glossier, knowing that their consumers are smart and intelligent, decide to read those labels. Um, and when they see honeysuckle, they don't automatically think preservative. 
And again, this could be slightly fragranced as well. Um, the citric acid uh, is probably in there for a little bit of acidity, but also to preserve the formula. And then something awesome that we have is allantoin. Now this is fascinating. It's actually produced by both humans, uh, plants and bacteria. But what's interesting is that it can help with skin conditions um, like acne, like eczema, like atopic dermatitis, and it's actually potent at very, very, very small concentrations. So we don't know what concentration they're putting it in. I am assuming that this is below the 1% line, so who knows if it's that much. But knowing that it can help with sensitive skin conditions, this is very interesting to me. And then last we have some hydroxyethyl cellulose, which is basically a gelling agent, which gives the product its feel. So for $28, is this super pure serum any better than the one from The Ordinary? And the truth is that, that it depends. If you want something alcohol free, go with The Ordinary. But if you have issues with some of the preservatives like phenoxyethanol, which again, Ordinary lists their product as alcohol free, but it does have those preservatives, that's something you might want to consider. And then in general, if you're a little bit more um, worried about ingredients. I wouldn't say there's anything in the Ordinaries one to be worried about, but if you just want ingredients that come from plants or come from nature, remember natural doesn't always mean better. But if that's something that you want because it aligns with who you are and what you use, Glossier is probably a better option for you. So that being said, I actually don't think that they are dupes at all. I think they have some major differences and depending on your needs and what you're looking for, these are two very different products. Even the feel is very different, but at the same time, the active is the same. So what you're trying to treat or the end result should be somewhat similar. It's kind of like going to the beach. You and a friend want to go to the beach, but you're going to take one route and the friend is going to take the other. Once you get there, you're both going to be at the same place. You're going to help with the oil and with some acne and some of that sebaceous production. But how you get there is very different. And maybe one route is going to be more enjoyable or prettier than the other. Who knows? That's basically what these two products are. Next, let's talk about the vitamin C moisturizer and serum. So again, on initial package, these look like the exact same thing. And you would say, why would I pay $28 for the Glossier one? Should I just stick with the Ordinary? But remember, you gotta turn to learn. So they're both vitamin C serums and they're both magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which just happens to be the type of vitamin C that they're using. Uh, the Ordinaries does use a coconut base, but they also include some uh, seed oil. It's specifically like an ink and peanut, which can have anti-inflammatory properties and it's actually really good for aging or more mature skin. There is some glycerin in here, which is nice and smoothing onto the skin. There's also some fruit extracts and some tocopherol, some vitamin E. And then again, for our preservative, we have phenoxyethanol and chloropensin. And the thing you should know about this is that it is a nice high potency vitamin C, but it doesn't sting. A lot of vitamin C people have, whoa, that went all over the floor. A lot of people have issues with vitamin C um, because it can sting their face and it can burn, especially if you have sensitive skin. But this one from The Ordinary is a nice, it's kind of like a cream texture and it doesn't do that. But now let's compare it to Glossier. Remember, this is 10 bucks, this is 28. Does it hold up? When we look at the ingredients, we do see the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate super high up there on the list. We also see that propanediol, but then we see dimethicone. Now this dimethicone is going to give this the most luxurious smoothing feel to the face ever. It's going to feel like makeup primer going on your skin because that's pretty much what dimethicone is. However, some people are worried about dimethicone. I've done a video about my thoughts on dimethicone and how my opinion on dimethicone has changed throughout the years as I have learned, studied, and grown more, but some people still want to avoid it. And if that's you, you should know that this product contains dimethicone. Also, the main difference is that this product is a serum, whereas you saw The Ordinaries was more of a moisturizer. So depending on how you're trying to add vitamin C to your routine, you might want to go with a moisturizer versus a serum, or a serum versus a moisturizer, because you already have a moisturizer that you love, or you already have a serum that you're not going to give up. And because this mixes pretty well with other ingredients, that's your choice. Now, when we continue down the line here, we do see some coconut derivatives. Again, this is usually found in foundation, same as we saw in The Ordinary. But then we do see jojoba seed oil. So instead of this Inca seed oil, we see jojoba and safflower. Now, both of those are pretty good for the skin. They're nice, they're hydrating. Um, they seem to work well on the skin. We also have shea butter, which is also super nourishing and great. But it's interesting to see that Glossier is choosing to use this kind of blend of oils and hydrators in this serum, whereas The Ordinary moisturizer, mainly the coconut, as well as a little bit of that ink and seed oil. 
We also have some fruit extracts in here, so that again is very similar. And then we have some natural preservatives, um, such as 1,2-hexanediol, as well as some xanthan gum for a little bit of that jelliness, um, and some different acids to preserve it. So is this a dupe? Did Glossier completely copy the ordinary? I think these two couldn't be more different. Again, this Glossier is a serum. It's nice, it's hydrating. Um, it does have some of those skin soothing ingredients and it definitely is an oilier product. Whereas The Ordinaries is a moisturizer and it's kind of short, straight to the point. You've got your vitamin C, it's non-burning, non-irritating, and it just kind of penetrates and lets you go on with your day. So depending on what you're looking for, these are two very different things. At the end of the day, knowledge is power. And as consumers, nobody's taking the time to educate us. Let's be totally honest, I love both of these brands, but they're all here just trying to sell us products. And no one's really here educating us or really helping us figure it out. And yes, The Ordinary has guides on their website and so does Glossier and so do other you know, cosmetic companies, but a lot of them are still pushing their products at the end of the day. And while I don't think that's bad, I do wish that there was more transparency when it comes to how these things are made and more objective resources on comparing and contrasting. And that's what I try to do with these videos to help you be an educated consumer, know what's gonna work for your skin and make smart decisions for you. The people who watch this channel are smart and we deserve the access to knowledge to continue growing as well as continue learning and making those choices that match who we are. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If so, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That ding dong button is waiting for you. If you want the video on phenoxyethanol, it is right here. And here's another video on the ordinary you might find interesting. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out and I will see you in the next video. Love you guys.